Welcome to an example on how to solve an initial value problem involving a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation using the method of undetermined coefficients. So to solve the initial value problem of a differential equation in this form here, we'll first find the general solution, which is given by y of x. Then once we do this, we'll find the value of c sub one and c sub two using the initial conditions. So for a quick review, to use the method of undetermined coefficients, we start by solving the corresponding homogeneous differential equation given here, where the solutions to the homogeneous differential equation from number one give us the first two terms of the general solution. And this is often called the complementary function. And then we're going to use steps two and three to determine big Y sub P a particular solution. So what we'll do is start by guessing a form of a particular solution to the differential equation with undetermined coefficients based upon the form of G of X. Then by using our guess and its derivatives, we'll perform substitution into the differential equation and solve for the undetermined coefficients. Then finally, we'll use the initial conditions to find C sub one and C sub two. So let's take a look at our example. The first thing we should notice is that we do have a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. And since the right side of the equation consists of polynomial functions and exponential functions, the method of undetermined coefficients is an appropriate strategy. So for the first step, we'll solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which would be y double prime plus six y prime plus eight y equals zero. And because we have constant coefficients, meaning our differential equation now fits this form, we can find the solution using a characteristic equation, which would be ar squared plus br plus c equals zero. So notice that a is one, B is six and C is eight. So the characteristic equation would be R squared plus six R plus eight equals zero, which is factorable. The factors of eight that add to six are positive four and positive two, and therefore the solution to this equation would be R equals negative four or R equals negative two. And now these two values of R help us determine the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation given here by Y of X. But these two terms also give us the first two terms in the general solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation, which is actually our goal. So from here, we can conclude that the general solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation would be Y of X equals C sub one times E raised to the power of negative four X plus C sub two times E raised to the power of negative two X and then plus a particular solution or plus big Y sub P. So now we'll make a guess for our particular solution or big Y sub P based upon G of X, the right side of our differential equation. Notice how we have a linear function and an exponential function. So we're going to go ahead and let big Y sub P, a particular solution, be a linear function with undetermined coefficients or the form AX plus B. That would be a linear function with unknown coefficients. And then for the exponential, we'll have plus C times E raised to the power of negative X, some constant times our exponential function. So from here, we'll find our first and second derivative and then perform substitution into the differential equation. So big Y sub P prime would be equal to A, and then we'd have zero plus C times the derivative of E to the negative X, which should be E to the negative X times negative one, so we'll have minus C times E to the negative X. And now the second derivative would be zero, and then minus C times e to the negative x times negative one, or c times e to the negative x. So now we'll take our three functions here and perform substitution into the given differential equation. And then from here we should be able to solve for a, b, and c. Let's go and do this on the next slide. So we'll have y double prime, which is c e to the negative x plus six times y prime, or six times 
a minus c e to the negative x, and then plus eight times y, or eight times ax plus b, plus c e to the negative x, and this must equal two x plus one e to the negative x. And now we'll equate the coefficients, but before we do this, we need to clear the parentheses. So we'll have c e to the negative x plus six a minus six c e to the negative x plus eight a x plus eight b plus eight c e to the negative x equals two x plus one e to the negative x. So now we're going to group the constant terms, the x terms, and the exponential terms. Let's first identify the constant terms. We have six a and eight b. Now we'll look for the x terms. There's only one, one here, and the remaining terms are exponential terms. Here, here, and here. So again, our constant terms, we have six a plus eight b, and then we have plus eight a times x, which I'll write like this. And now for the exponential terms, we're going to factor out e to the negative x, so we'll have plus, this would be c, and then minus six c, and then plus eight c, e to the power of negative x must equal, I'm going to go ahead and put a zero here for the constant term, plus two x, plus one e to the negative x, which means six a plus eight b must equal zero, eight a must equal two, and finally, c minus six c plus eight c must equal positive one. Let's go ahead and write this as a system of equations. Again, we have six a plus eight b equals zero, eight a equals two, and this would be one c minus six c plus eight c, that's going to be three c, must equal one. Well, looking at this equation here, if we divide both sides by eight, we have a equals two eighths, or a equals one fourth. Here we have c equals one third, and then here we can see that eight b would be equal to negative six a, or negative six times one fourth, since a is equal to one fourth. So we have eight b equals, this would be negative six fourths, or negative three halves. Multiply both sides by one eighth. And we have b equals, this would be negative three sixteenths. So now we'll take the values of a, b, and c, so, and substitute them into our particular solution, or big Y sub p, here, here, and here. Once we do this, we have our general solution, then we can go back and find the values of c sub one and c sub two based upon the initial conditions. So our particular solution, big Y sub p, is going to be equal to ax, or one-fourth x, plus b, which is minus three-sixteenths, plus c times e to the x, or plus one-third e to the negative x which now means we have the general solution to the given differential equation where we had y of x here and we just found y sub p. So the general solution would be the sum of these two terms plus big Y sub p or plus one-fourth x minus three-sixteenths plus one-third e to the negative x. And now we've made some really good progress. We have the general solution here. So now we'll use the initial conditions here to find the values of c sub one and c sub two to solve the initial value problem. So let's start with the fact that we know that y of zero equals zero. So if y of zero equals zero, we'll substitute zero for x. So here we'd have e to the zero, that'd be one. So we have c sub one plus another e to the zero, that's c sub two. Again, if x is zero, this would be zero. We'd have minus three sixteenths. This would be plus one third. Again, we know this must equal zero. So if we add these two fractions and move it to the right side of the equation, we would have c sub one plus c sub two 
equals negative 7 48ths. And now we need to find the first derivative of y to use the second initial condition that y prime of zero equals zero. So we need to remember this equation here, and then we'll form another equation with c sub one and c sub two from the second initial condition. So let's find y prime. We would have negative four c sub one e to the negative four x minus two c sub two e to the negative two x plus one fourth minus zero, and this would be minus one third e to the negative x. So if y prime of zero equals zero, then we would have negative four c sub one minus two c sub two plus one fourth minus one third equals zero. So if we subtract these two fractions, and then move it to the right side of the equation, that would give us negative four c sub one minus two c sub two equals one twelfth. And again, from the previous slide, we found that c sub one plus c sub two equals negative seven forty-eighths. So c sub one plus c sub two equals negative seven forty-eighths. So now, we want to take this system of equations and solve for c sub one and c sub two. Now due to time, I'm going to go ahead and let you verify this. I already found that c sub one must be equal to five forty-eighths, and c sub two must be equal to negative one-fourth. Again, to solve this system, we can use either substitution or the elimination method. But now that we've found the values of c sub one and c sub two, we have the solution to the initial value problem. It's going to be y of x after we substitute the value of c sub one here, and the value of c sub two here. So the solution to our initial value problem will be the function y of x equals c sub one, which would be five forty-eighths times e raised to the power of negative four x plus c sub two, which is negative one-fourth, so minus one-fourth e to the negative two x, and then plus one-fourth x minus three sixteenths plus one third e to the negative x. So as you can see, that was quite a bit of work, but this would be the solution to the initial value problem. I hope you found this explanation helpful.